are some of the most influential and innovative thinkers and actors, makers and practitioners in dance and technology practice today. My name is Grisha Coleman. I was a member of the Urban Bushwoman, and the first time I was with the Urban Bushwoman was here at Jacob's Pillow. The project has two streams of investigation. One is to build a movement repository, a digital movement repository using motion capture technology. The other is to build from these, these, the data that's captured with the motion capture technology to build these movement portraits. It's like, a, when, it's like if I were to paint a portrait of you, I would look and I would use the colors and the stroke and the things, that's the interpretation. But it's like Typical technology happens in a studio or in a clinic with a green screen, highly controlled situation and then they put many, many dots on you, and so they have an intense amount of data that they will then CGI or animate or do whatever they're doing with. This is different. A mobile motion capture system is a different thing. So you're not asking someone to come into your clinic, into your studio, into your like clean space and do their authentic movement in a kind of way. You're saying, do your thing. I'll just, I'm just gonna capture you out here. This is a huge change for that level of technology. There aren't 52 million sensors, there's just 16. This is so early in this technology. We just capture like gross motor movement in a kind of way. But even with gross motor movement, you can recognize people. Like if I captured your mother, no one else would know, but you could know. This is extraordinary. My name's Andrew Schneider. I'm a theater maker, a dance maker, an uh, installation maker, anything that really has to do with live performance. So during my residency here um, at Dance Really Intelligences, I have been exploring a couple of things. One is sort of this 3D sound spatialization technology called Wavefield Synthesis, which sort of produces sound holograms, so you don't hear something coming from the speakers, you hear it out in space. It's sort of a sound object that you can hear out in space. And with that, I'm trying to explore also the impossible synchronicity between human beings. I kind of came in through a side door of dance. I wasn't classically trained, but I'm very interested in bodies in space over time. What I tend to do is get obsessed with things that I'm already making in my own work and then seeing how they're already being done in dance. So like things like unison or canon or prolation, I'm bringing those into my own work just in a different way, in, in like a hyper-specific way. So instead of just like, we're gonna do these basic movements at the same time, I'm like, let's, drill down into like what is the smallest version of that possible like can we make a dance that's just our eyes darting around the room how synchronous can we get is the idea and then what does that say about larger ideas about space and time and being connected to each other like you have to like yeah get stuff and do stuff from my time. i'm like talking to you you don't have to is that a problem but i think it's a question no my name is Katie Kwan. I am a choreographer, a dancer, a researcher, an engineer. I work at the intersection of dance and robotics. My work is a piece called Breathless, Katie and the Robot. It's a brand new piece. It's a long-term collaboration with Ken Goldberg, who is a robotics professor at UC Berkeley, also an artist. Through some of our discussions, realized that the meat of the piece was really around this concept of work and the future of work and what does it mean to work? How does work define, create who we are? How do our bodies shift as a result of the work that we perform? All of this feels beautifully contextually relevant in this wonderful history of a place that used to be a farm and has since transitioned into being this mecca for dancing. How can space create and define different bodies of work. This week at the Dancerly Intelligence's Pillow Lab, I'm developing the human movement that's going to happen in this work. I should mention that we are doubling down on this American Workday theme because the piece itself will be eight hours. We're calling it a modern dance retelling of an American Workday. 
we're trying to show some of the poetry and beauty around different kinds of physical manual tasks in this context between a human and a robot. There is tremendous beauty in the movement and presentation of the human form. We are so capable, flexible, adaptive, bringing all of those things to light, celebrating that, celebrating the way that humans have been, will continue to be. That's really the crux of this piece. And we're happening to use a robot to help facilitate some of those statements. We as humans have been dancing a lot longer than we have been doing anything else. We are going to keep dancing. I think that's very well known. And we're going to dance in relationship to the tools and algorithms that we create as a society because that's how we make sense of those things. When I think about the next 91 years and creating a theater for the decades that will support those 91 years, we need this sort of collective belief that this sort of work, it demonstrates something that's, yeah, future facing, but like deeply ancestral about the way that we live and relate not only to each other, but also to our tools. We use the tools that are available to us. And if they're not available to us, then we dream about them, but we don't use them. And in order to get fluent in them, we have to have them available to us. And that is an investment in infrastructure. I think that it's an amazing testament to how you're thinking about what a future performance space might be. When we think with potential spaces, we can be more creative, more spontaneous. It's not like a pack and play. That's novel. I'm just thrilled that Jacob's Pillow as an institution is like taking the chance on people like me and Grisha and Katie to sort of see in us that we are thinking on sometimes the bleeding edge of, of what the form can be and knowing that it can't get made like traditional things get made. It needs a special incubator. Um, he knew. He was on Basin's radio. Yeah. yeah, there you go.